Number 36. Using the information thus far in this chapter, explain why battery-powered electronics perform poorly in low temperatures. Okie dokie. So, we need to talk about why battery-powered electronics, so a good example of this is your cell phone, Why? right? Why do cell phones not perform well in low temperatures, right? What's going to happen in a low temperature environment? Now, long story short, this actually happened to me. Uh, my fiance and I, we went to Washington, D.C. in the uh, dead of winter. And um, long story short, it was so cold outside and we were walking all over the place that the phone started to work very weirdly. And both of our phones shut down. We had no idea where we were. And we were trying to find, uh, you know, some, some place to, uh, some place to charge our phones. Lo and behold, we had no chargers and that was a fun experience. But anyway, now I know that whenever it's cold out, make sure you have a charger. Let's keep going, shall we? So battery powered electronics perform very poorly in low temperatures. Why is that? Well, it all comes down to the Nernst equation. The E cell equals the standard cell potential minus RT divided by F times the ln of Q. Now we don't have to solve anything here. We just have to relate your cell potential. And I'm highlighting this one because we're not talking about standard cell potential. This would be at room temperature. That's why it has this little notch here. This E cell is your cell potential of the battery inside your cell phone that's gonna run uh, when it's really, really cold at, when you're not at room temperature. And the only other variable that we need is this temperature, right? Now it seems like if I just make this divided by one and I move this up a little bit, it looks like both the E cell and the temperature are both in the numerators of some sort, right? So it's kind of like a direct relationship. In a way. So that means if your temperature is going to go very, very high when you're in really, really hot temperatures outside, chances are your cell phone is going to say, mm, no, no, I got to cool down, right? So if your temperature is increasing, your E cell is going to be getting very, 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 very high and producing much more voltage than it should. It has to cool down. But on the flip side, if the temperature is dropping, what's going to happen to that E cell? Yeah, the E cell is going to drop. And if the temperature drops so low, right, when it's like, you know, close to, you know, I don't know, maybe negative degrees, there's no such thing as negative Kelvin, but you're basically getting lower and lower and lower, it's going to be taking away from your standard E cell. You're going to be dropping that cell potential, you know, in the battery. And just know that a dead battery, a dead battery always means that you have an E cell of zero, zero volts. So that's the idea here is that if you have very, very low temps, that E cell is gonna be start dropping and dropping and dropping. And if it drops so low to zero, it's automatically gonna be dead. And that is why battery powered electronics, AKA cell phones, perform very poorly in low temperatures. Because as you drop in temp, that E cell will drop. And if it's getting so low, you know, zero is the lowest it can go because then the battery is just gonna die. And that's it. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on those tests and quizzes, and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.